Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. David Bianco with you for another vinyl shootout. This one's going to be a little bit different because I usually compare two or maybe three different versions, but now we're going to be looking at four or five. So this is going to be a little more in-depth, a little more backstory, a little more thinking involved for it. And so I'd suggest maybe you, you grab a cool one or a, a hot one or whatever you want and sit back because there's going to be some splaining to do on this one at the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. Lucy, I'm home. So we're going to be discussing Pretzel Logic. It's the third LP by Steely Dan. It was released in 1974. Uh, the big hit off that album was Ricky Don't Lose That Number. And so this album is one that is part of the series being re-released uh, from an agreement that was made um, with the artists and the management team to release through analog productions for the 45 2 lp series and universal on geffen releasing the single lp 33 so we'll definitely be comparing the 30 dollar steely dan uh, pretzel logic from universal to the 150 dollar uhqr by analog productions that obviously is now what's out there most recent release here july 28th 2023 i'm also going to be comparing it to a couple of original uh, ogs one that's a re-release ones that uh, is the uh, first pressing and then also quadraphonic version four channel quadraphonic version of pretzel logic that i've had since 1974. as a bonus i'll also be discussing four of the pretzel logic tracks that made their way onto steely dan's greatest hits a double album that was mastered by none other than robert ludwig okay so let's get started let me start by saying I have never found Pretzel Logic to be an especially pleasing sounding recording, at least as it was presented in the original stereo vinyl pressing. Now, I do have a certain skewed perspective here because when this came out in 1974, I acquired both the stereo and the quadraphonic version as I had a quad system, as I still do with the Pioneer QX949 that decodes all three quad formats. By the way, the ABC Command Quadraphonic LP series, which Steely Dan is on, use the Sansui QS, or regular matrix format. So, right from the jump, my experience with Pretzel Logic was comparing the stereo and the quad, and defaulted really to listening to the quad, because I found the vinyl on the stereo original first pressing with the black ABC label, uh, the vinyl to be a bit noisy and, and, and the mastering seemed a little shrill on the top end and including some of the vocals. In 1980, I acquired a repress on the MCA Rainbow Sky series, which reduced the vinyl noise, but the same upper shrillness uh, remained. And both of those, by the way, uh, were mastered by Alan Zentz, who is no slouch. So in the end... I actually listened to the quad almost exclusively over the years versus the stereo version. Now, one quick special note here on the quad. As Steely Dan's first release, Can't Buy a Thrill, was on quad, and it had a variety of different mixes or takes versus the original stereo release. And that is why I didn't use it in my Can't Buy a Thrill shootout, as it wasn't really an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. However, here with Pretzel Logic, it seems the tracks are the exact same mixes and takes as are on the stereo version. So I will be doing some comparison with it. So, so this backstory serves as a background that took me to the start of this week when I pulled out my Pretzel Logic records in preparation for this shootout, knowing that the UHQR was going to arrive this week. Putting on the original first press and the repress yielded the same impressions I just described. Not, not really what I would call a pleasant listening experience for me. But when I put on the quad, 
kind of the warmness of the music and a little broader soundstage, of course, due to the quad, instantly gratified my ears. Now, some who might play the quad and only be able to play it in stereo may find it sounding a bit different given they're getting a blended matrix mix versus the decoded matrix mix into four channels. So my discussion here of my experience with the quad is going to be how it sounds in a true four channel decoding as it was intended. So taking all of those earlier pressings now and looking at the the original on Black ABC label, the 1980 release on the uh, Rainbow Cloud Bluish label, and of course the Quad. For me, the Quad was the better sounding overall on balance. Uh, definitely had a warmer sound, wasn't quite as harsh to me, and I think all things uh, instrumentation and voice-wise balanced out quite nicely on that version. Next, I'm going to discuss the other release that came out on the same day as the UHQR on July 28, 2023 from Universal on Geffen Records. Uh, this is the $30 retail um, release. And so the way these come about is Bernie Grunman has the master tapes for all this. And uh, Analog Productions, of course, does a AAA in all analog from tape cut to the lacquer straight through for the mastering chain, all analog, no digital. That's what he gets to Chad and then Chad Kassam that I'll talk about here soon uh, at Analog Productions. He goes through and uh, gets a, a test pressing or version that he likes to get released. Uh, but what is also done is Bernie provides a high res file and I'm assuming maybe it's just a flat transfer kind of thing to whoever Universal contracts to do the mastering for this. So there's a digital step in creating this version. And, and there are some areas of artifact, digital artifact in the, uh, that you can hear in this record. Uh, it's not overwhelming, but it is there. But on the whole, what I would say about this record, uh, this again was mastered by Alex a brash, a brash, who did Can't Buy a Thrill as well. Now, they went to a guy named Dan Krieger in Germany to do uh, Countdown to Ecstasy, but uh, Alex uh, did this one and did Can't Buy a Thrill. And they are very similar uh, in outcome, in my opinion, in that they are very hot sounding. They have some compression in them. Um, they definitely, you know, have the highs and those are there. Um, this is the kind of record and I listen to these songs and I'd say, yeah, these would sound great on AM radio. They really have that kind of feel to them, to me. Uh, and that has a place and all. Uh, but again, this takes you uh, in a little different place than uh, where we're going to be talking about the UHQR. But this uh, is commercially available. The, the vinyl is not noisy. It's relatively quiet, um, not bad at all. Um, but it kind of leaps off the turntable a bit. And um, it also, again, has some of that signature of, of digital artifact that is present in some of what you hear. But I would say uh, if you really like your stuff hot, you like some compression, uh, this, will, this will be there for you. That's for sure. Again, that's not really my taste in it. Uh, I didn't like Can't Buy a Thrill in this format because it was just a little bit too much. Things weren't distinct enough for me and separated and sound staged properly for me to really be able to appreciate it. But I think I can very easily say uh, they do not get what uh, Bernie Grunman ends up uh, being the final cut for Chad Kassam at Analog Productions for this. Uh, they must get just a flat transfer because uh, there's quite a bit of difference between this and the UHQR. So the UHQR, that's the big deal, right? Before I get into that, I want to remind you at the end of this video, I'm going to be discussing the four tracks from Pretzel Logic that happen to be on Steely Dan's Greatest Hits double LP, mastered by Robert Ludwig. So stick around for that. But the UHQR itself. Well, you know, we do these vinyl shootouts and traditionally we kind of say, does it sound better? Did they beat the original? Well, when I take that quick A-B analysis approach, the first impression and objective experience with this UHQR is, 
What happened to the top end? Are my tweeters on strike? There is no doubt that this is the first thing that hits you in the face 100% if you've been listening to the originals and have that in your mind to quickly compare to. I mean, I can remember when I put on the UHQR of Can't Buy a Thrill. Everything was more rich. Brights were brighter. Vocals were more profound. Instruments appeared all over the soundstage. Some of them I'd barely heard in the past. The bottom end was tight and secure. Mission accomplished. Home run. So naturally, one gets a bit set up by that type of $150 expectation, me included. As a side note, I recall that Chad had Bernie cut side A of Can't Buy a Thrill seven times until he finally approved it. Checking the dead wax on this one, side A got five tries with RE4 in the dead wax, and sides B through D got four retries with RE3 in the dead wax. So this release, as we hear it, was a conscious decision. Well, after a first listen, I said, okay, uh, these previous write-ups on the UHQR that I've seen recently in the last week were, were pretty accurate given the normative expectation. So naturally, there's always speculations that go on, right? Was, was the tape a problem? Was there a misalignment? Highly unlikely with Bernie doing it. I kind of dismiss that. But, you know, anything can happen, but not this many times with Chad. Of course, regardless of any cause, Chad is the one listening and doing this A-B to approve Bernie's work. So he had to hear what we're hearing. I've been in his office. I've experienced how he does it. It's a great process. It's 100% solid. Well, after that first listen, my next listen I took on my Sony MDRV6 headphones. And that's part of my normal evaluation process. Listening to this on its own in that confined area, I got a whole new perspective and now an appreciation of the recording itself. Only the quad had ever struck me as a pleasant listen like this. You know, with that and subsequent listens on my Polk Audio speakers, I had to label the sound of this UHQR as smooth. Turning up the volume on my speakers also made the recording more engaging and inviting. When I did that on the originals, that harshness got magnified to my ears. So this release then defies the expectations many of us normally have toward an upgraded release. So... I decided it was time to go to the person who approved the UHQR release. As many of you may know, I met Chad Kassam last year at his facilities in Saline, Kansas, and we've kept in limited communication. By the way, and for the record, no pun intended, I do not receive any promotion, fee, free records, discounts. I don't get anything in advance. I pay and order like everybody else out there. But given the reviews that were out there here in the first week or so, I wanted to hear, quote, what happened, as uh, my friend Nathan Goss said. Well, first off, I validated the tape is in great condition. It's original master. It's not a copy. For listening comparisons, Chad compared it to an ABC white label promo of the album. So that's certainly a first pressing. So to cut to the chase, Chad wanted this to have a warm, smoother sound. Those are his words, warm, smoother sound. So for me, the translation is the original wasn't his liking and this was a way of besting it. When I mentioned how Can't Buy a Thrill was so much more dynamic and had a tad more brightness, he said, you don't want this one to be any brighter. So in this case, Beating the original meant something different from what we've trained ourselves to expect. I, too, had to wrap my head around that. But but as I said in the beginning, I can't say I ever liked the original sound in the first place compared to the first two albums of Steely Dan. Uh, The quad was kind of my refuge to get away from that original. And I did it for nearly 50 years until this week. So the ooh and ah of getting a $150 UHQR got flipped a bit on its head here. I can see why some rejected out of hand because it wasn't what they expected and 
I respect that belief. I understand it 100%. However, for me, this one really made me mature a bit in my thinking and have a, an appreciation for what can be done with a recording. Here's an analogy I thought of. Have you ever had high expectations for some food dish and upon tasting it said, ah, this isn't quite the taste I expected at all. But after letting it savor a bit and having a few more bites and coming to appreciate the difference in what you're now tasting versus what you'd expected in the first place. That's kind of like that here, I think. It's really the story of this UHQR pretzel logic. Maybe we should go back to that definition of pretzel logic due to all these twists and turns, and the logic here has to be inverted a bit. So, so here's my bottom line. I now actually like to listen to this album due to the UHQR, and outside of my quad, I avoided it. So if it's all about the music, for me, this ends up being a satisfying outcome. For others, it may never hit the mark. So that's my take on the UHQR. I mean, I spent a lot of time this week since Monday listening to the originals and the quad and, and getting myself ready for this. And then when the UHQR came, of course, really diving into that. And then when the digital uh, copy came as well, that. So, you know, a lot of time went into this. And because this wasn't a slam dunk high five, hit it out of the park like can't buy a throw was, uh, where you could just go, wow, I'm t taking all my marbles home because this baby's over. Uh, it, you know, this one took a lot more work and time and thought. And it was really worth it. And funny enough, to, to close a conversation uh, with Chad last night, he imparted a story to me by the late, great Doug Sachs. You see, Doug famously never asked people listening to his work, how did it sound? He said, how does it feel? And I'd say the UHQR Pretzel Logic feels wonderful. I think it's more about feeling than sound. And I'll bet if Donald Fagan gets a copy of this, he might very well agree. So as promised, the four tracks from Pretzel Logic that were on the Steely Dan Greatest Hits album, which is right here. I have several of these. This is a great double album. A lot of great tunes, obviously, but the mastering is unbelievable. Many of the songs on here really best the actual OG in terms of the mastering. Robert Ludwig was unbelievable, and on the four tracks for Pretzel Logic, they definitely best the OG. You know, they have that, that good, bright sound. They have that great, strong, forward voice. They have the, the really nice, smooth, low end. It's just really well done. And so, you know, if you were going to say what's really a best version of a song, per se, when you compare it to the way it was originally mixed and brought from the OGs, these are really the way to go. None of the compression that you hear in the digital $30 one. So, you know, I don't know if you like the whole Pretzel Logic album, but if you like just a few of the tracks and you want the best sounding version of those songs, grab you a copy of these. They usually go for around 20 bucks. Look for the RL in the dead wax on all four sides. Please make sure you get the RL. I will tell you the truth. Anytime I find one of these at a reasonable price, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, I buy it. And uh, because there's so many people I know that want this album that can't find a four by RL, having it on all four sides, uh, that I usually just sell it to friends. So uh, again, this is a great example of what a super mastering engineer can do. So as always, thanks for watching. This was really a lot of fun in a lot of ways. It didn't turn out quite the way I thought in any way, shape, or form. And the effort to get there wasn't like anything I've ever done before. But I'm glad for the experience. And I want to thank Chad because he's always challenging things, you know. And, and I give him credit for going with his gut. 
uh, and that is important to do. And again, I really now have a newfound enjoyment for this album. Uh, I just want to be clear. If your expectation is that it's going to, you know, be as crisp and bright and everything like the original and even go top heavy on that. And, you know, it's just not going to do that at all. It's a totally different experience. Uh, and for me, at the end of the day, when I listen to it now, I really can enjoy it. And I think that's why we buy records. So for now, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, press on that bell and pick the all option. A like or thumbs up is appreciated for the old algorithm. And comments. Love to hear your comments on this one. I know it's a long video and I know it's been in depth, but I really would appreciate to hear your thoughts. So for now, take care as always, and we'll catch you next time on our next Safe and Sound Texas audio excursion. Take care, everybody.